Making it to the end game in Fortnite with no problems along the way is probably one of the most challenging goals to accomplish. It's not easy to avoid RNG, waves of W keyers, and unbelievable sweaties. But don't worry, Fortnite fam, I'm Cody, and today we're going to break down some of the pro strategies that let them consistently make it to the end game. If you want to make it to the end game as much as possible, you're going to need a game plan. Now, your game plan is mainly going to be based off of your drop spot and how you rotate from it in the mid game. Having a good drop spot is definitely necessary in order to minimize the amount of RNG involved in your game. Some of you may be wondering how you can find a good drop spot. This is something that's based on the team mode, what your playstyle is like, and what part of the map you're most comfortable with. In a mode like solos, you can land pretty much anywhere and make it work with a decent loot route. While in team modes, you may need to land at a POI that will have enough loot and materials for everyone on your team. For an example, let's say you're a solo that is very passive and doesn't like fighting off spawn. A low risk option would be to find an area near the edge of the map that you're very comfortable with. This way, you don't have to worry about players rotating into you, and you can easily rotate to a safe side of the map after you finish looting. You'll need to find a loot route in the area that can give you everything you need to get through the entire game. This means necessary weapons like shotguns and ARs, consumables like shields to use and carry, some sort of mobility like bounce pads for endgame, and max materials if possible. Lastly, for your game plan, you should have all of the safest possible rotation routes planned out to get to the first zone's dead side. This way, you won't have to think about how you're going to rotate at the very last second, and you'll be set up for the rest of the game with safer rotations than the rest of the lobby. Also, if you don't know what dead side is, it's basically the side of every zone that the least amount of players need to rotate to. So if first zone pulls north of the map, that would make the very north side of the zone dead side, since all the players rotating from the south would be contesting each other on the south side of the zone. If your game plan still isn't helping you break through to the end of the match, then you should head on over to ProGuides.com. Our innovative VOD review system will allow the pros to break down your mistakes and allow you to improve incredibly fast. Check it out, my friends! Once you have got your game plan ready, you'll have a clear view of what you're going to do in early and mid game, and you can now put that to use. Beating your opponents to your drop spot is very crucial. The reason for this is because you want to get a weapon before they can and easily eliminate them from the game before they even have a chance to fight back. So right when you load into a game, you should instantly look at the map to see where the bus route is located. This is necessary since you want to drop at the perfect time and beat all your potential opponents in the race to your drop spot. By the time you drop from the bus, you need to already know the exact spot you want to land at, and you can aim for that spot as you're flying through the air. While you're pulling your glider out, you're going to want to listen to the area around you so you'll know if anyone is planning on landing right next to you or not. You can also do a quick spin to take a look at your surroundings, hopefully without messing up your drop too much. After landing on a weapon with your insanely fast drop, you should take one last look around you just to be safe to see if you're contested or not, as well as seeing the exact spot your potential contestants are landing at. I double dare you to be aware. With a perfect drop, you'll be able to loot up quickly, pop some shields, and win off spawn with ease. You can quietly sit on the rooftops to get a quick beam at the right moment or hide around your opponent's looting areas if you want to make a sneaky play. But make sure you're taking advantage of your time and farming up some mats as you loot. It's good to have mats right away for peace control plays. And you wouldn't want to lose an early game fight over something as little as your opponent having more mats than you. After winning the potential fight, you'll need to quickly loot and farm everything you can in order to be as stacked as possible. The better loot you have, the more room you have to work with in the end game, and the easier it will be to get out of almost unavoidable sticky situations. Also, make sure you're continuously glancing at the map to know when and where the first zone pulls, and constantly checking your surroundings so you know if someone is planning on sneaking up on you when they think you're distracted. I'm only pretending to tie my shoe, brother. Boom boom shakalaka to the face. This is when the early game comes to an end and the mid game begins. At this point, first zone should already be located and you should already know how you're going to rotate it based on the routes you planned out in your game plan. But since we haven't gone too far into that yet, let me give you some suggestions. 
If your drop spot is near the edge of the map and you pulled first zone, chances are you're already dead side and just need to get to natural high ground in order to have the safe upper hand on the opponents that come near you and potentially set yourself up for future zones. But if you find yourself in a less fortunate situation where first zone pulls to the opposite side of the map, you have a couple options. Thankfully, in Chapter 2, Season 5, we have found new ways to rotate, such as sand tunneling, using zero-point crystals, and driving cars. Hong Kong. But there are safe ways to use things like this that can guarantee you a free rotate. Taking advantage of white heels like medkits to rotate to far first zones can help you immensely. You can use items like this by staying in the zone to rotate and using a medkit when your HP is getting low. This is very safe since it allows you to rotate in an area that most of the players will not be in. But be careful with this strategy. You need to make sure you have enough white heals while doing this so you don't die in the storm, as well as making sure you're heading towards dead side and staying away from potentially contested areas so you don't run into anyone on the way. After successfully completing a rotation like this, you should stay near the dead side and start planning your rotation for the second zone. Another first zone situation is a zone that doesn't pull across the map, nor onto your drop spot's location. For a zone like this, you should rotate around the side of the map that is closest to the zone and straight into the back of the dead side. These rotates are fairly simple since items like white heels aren't necessary to complete the rotation and you won't be staying in the zone. Also, most of the time, you just have to swim in the water for a minute or two. So put on those floaties and get at it. From here on out, try to remember where First Zone's dead side was located, since this information will be useful to understand where the majority of players will be located in future zones. After completing any First Zone rotation, you should be set up somewhere on a natural high ground on dead side. You don't have to be on the far edge of the map, but you can if you feel most comfortable there for the First Zone. Storm Surge activates in times when there are more than 70 players alive two minutes before Third Zone reveals itself. More than 50 players alive one minute before 5th zone, or half and half, reveals itself, and more than 30 players alive one minute before 7th zone, known as second moving, begins. If you don't have more damage than the threshold required by the time Storm Surge starts, you will be hit for 25 HP every 5 seconds until you are above the threshold, or until enough people have been eliminated for Storm Surge to end. The damage threshold is determined by the amount of damage all players are doing in the match and the amount of players that need to be eliminated for Storm Surge to end. Oh, and a good note to know is that if you're eliminated by Storm in a team mode, your teammates will not be able to revive you since Storm Surge does not knock players down. It instantly finishes them. Get vaporized, sucka. Knowing this, you should do damage to players when you get the chance. Of course, only if there are enough players alive for Storm Surge to activate in the first place. And if there is, don't stress on it too much in early zones. This can lead to unnecessary fights that will hurt you in the long run and potentially end your game. You should get Storm Surge when needed by tagging players with your AR or sniper from a distance that won't allow them to W key you if they get angry. Also, this can help you understand why players are randomly tagging you in stacked games and help you understand areas to stay out of in order to avoid this. Using your knowledge from the first zone's dead side, the rest of your mid-game rotates will be pretty simple to understand, and you shouldn't have too much of a problem completing them. For second zone, you can slowly make your way in after seeing where the players around you are located. That's if, if there are any, since you'll still be on the dead side. Also, a quick tip to remember, you'll want to look through your cone before the majority of rotations, otherwise you'll be blindly rotating, which could lead to some very bad outcomes. Back on topic, you can use your natural mobility like cars if you'd like, or you can play more on the quiet side and run on foot. During this rotation, you may be getting shot from opponents for storm surge if your game is stacked. You can use wood walls and stairs if needed to protect yourself and refarm your mats later, since wood is usually very easy to find and it's better to use wood instead of burning through heels and wasting mobility but you should still be taking the safest route possible for your rotation to avoid situations like this in the first place. Getting yourself to the dead side of the second zone is good, but you can also try to get a little closer to the center of the zone in order to up your chances of pulling third zone. You'll need to be building your bases in brick or metal. So basing on rocks that are located on natural high ground will be great if possible. This way, you can refarm your brick. 
You can also do the same thing with brick or metal buildings and claim them for a bigger base that doesn't waste your mats. For the third zone, it's a similar rotation to the second, but basing it in the center is way more important to up your chances of pulling fourth. With knowing that information, it's still not a necessary risk to take if you're near the center of the zone already. For the fourth zone, you're going to want to base next to the inside of the edge of the circle. You should do this since the fifth zone, known as half and half, pulls to a random edge on the fourth zone, but you don't want to randomly pick an edge to base next to. You should base this on natural or already built high ground. This way, if you want to pull half and half, you will be able to hold high ground throughout the end of the game, or at least for a little while of it. And if you can't, you'll still manage to avoid being buried by the rest of the players rotating. If you aren't lucky enough to pull half and half, you can rotate around the part of the zone that's closest to it, using something like sand tunneling, zero point crystals, or a bouncer or two if you really need to. But it's best to save those for the end game. Because as always, Patience is a virtue. Alrighty guys, we have made it to the end of the video, but let's do a quick summary on what we have just learned. Creating a game plan will help you have an organized early game and get you to dead side with ease. Having a good drop can help you win your off spawn fights without a problem. Doing damage in stacked lobbies can save you from dying to storm surge. And getting enough loot early in the game will allow you to focus on the more important things like safely rotating to every zone. If you do all these things, you will be a superstar. Make sure to add these tips into your game by practicing with things like scrims and you'll be making every end game in no time. That's it for this video though, so leave a like if you learned anything, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell so you never miss a future upload. Y'all are dope, y'all are grinding, keep at it, I believe in you. I'll see you on the battlefield, y'all. Peace.